Hey, Calculus class. <clears throat> Today you're going to learn topic 25, extreme values. So we're first going to talk about what an absolute minimum and an absolute maximum are. In an interval, the function f of x has an absolute, or depending on certain books, it could be called a global maximum, at x equals c, if f of c is greater than or equal to all other f of x in that interval. And in an interval, the function f of x has an absolute or global minimum at x equals c if f of x is less than or equal to all other f of x in that interval. And the maximum and minimum values of f are called the extreme values of x, or sorry, of f. So if we were to look at this graphically, the <clears throat> absolute maximum is the highest point, and that the lowest point is your absolute minimum. Note, absolute extrema can be found at the endpoints, so you have to always check the endpoints. <clears throat> now we're going to look at what are called local minimum and local maximum. A function f has a local, or sometimes called relative, maximum at x equals c if there is an open interval containing c such that in that interval f of c is greater than or equal to all other values of f of x. In other words, x equals c is where the derivative changes from positive to negative. A function f has a local or relative minimum at x equals c if there is an open interval containing c such that in that interval f of c is less than or equal to all other values of f of x. In other words, x equals c is where the derivative changes from negative to positive. Note, local extrema can never be found at the endpoints. So if we're looking at a picture here, <clears throat> the local maximums would be here at B and at D, because here you can see that the slopes of the tangent lines go from positive to negative, from positive to negative. And the local minimums is where the derivative goes from negative to positive, negative to positive. So this leads into what we call the extreme value theorem. This says that if f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, then f attains an absolute maximum value, f of c, and an absolute minimum value, f of d, at some numbers c and d in the interval a to b. So all this means is that if you have a continuous function on a closed interval, there has to be a highest point and there has to be a lowest point. And here are some examples of um, continuous functions on a closed interval with the high and the low point. Now, it is <clears throat> this is where it's not a closed interval, or sorry, it is a closed interval, but not continuous. So it has an absolute min, which is right here at two, but no absolute max, because that right there is an open dot. Now this is an example of an open interval, but it's continuous. There is no absolute max or min. This is an open dot right here. This leads into what we call critical numbers. A critical number of a function f is a number x equals c in the domain of f such that either the derivative equals zero or the derivative does not exist. So what I mean does not exist, that means like a corner or a jump or an asymptote or something like that. So <clears throat> when f prime of c equals zero at the local maxes and minimums, and when f prime of c does not um, exist, and that's at corners, discontinuities, and vertical tangent lines. 
And so let's try this problem. And in this graph, all I want you to do is to identify which values are critical numbers and why. You should have said x equals b because you have a local max. There is a horizontal tangent line. The derivative equals 0. At x equals c, you have a local min. The derivative equals 0. At x equals d, you have a local max because the derivative does not exi exist. You have a corner. At x equals e, you have a local min. Um, the derivative does not exist because you have a corner. f, local max, derivative does not exist, you have a corner. x equals g is neither because f of g does not exist there is a vertical tangent line. So when there's a vertical tangent line, it is neither a max or a min, so you have a vertical tangent line. Other important theorems include what is called Fermat's theorem. This says that if f has a local maximum or a minimum at c, and if the derivative exists, then the derivative equals zero, and c is a critical number of f. Another theorem says that if f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, then f attains both an absolute minimum and an absolute maximum value on that interval. So using the theorems and the fact that we now know what critical numbers are and um, maxes and mins, we're going to find the extrema of a function. So. Given f of x equals the square root of x times the quantity x min 8 minus x on the interval from 0 to 4. You first want to find the critical numbers, which means find the derivative, set the derivative equal to 0, and determine when the derivative does not exist. So I'm going to first find the derivative using the product rule. So the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Do a little simplifying. And this right here, that's, that's a minus. It's kind of blended into the fraction bar. Find a common denominator and get a single fraction. Now I'm going to find where the derivative is equal to 0 and when it does not exist. So the derivative equals 0 when the top equals 0, because that's when a fraction equals 0. So I'm going to find when the numerator equals 0, which in this case is x equals 8 over 3. Now the derivative does not exist when the bottom does not exist, because that's when a fraction does not exist. So I'm going to find for what x values does the denominator equal 0. And that would be x equals 0. Now I'm going to find the y values for each critical number. So for f of 0, I get 0. For f of 8 over 3, and after some simplifying, and you can use your calculator if you want, you get some lovely decimal. Now, if you are asked to find the absolute extrema, you must also find the y values at the endpoints. Then the largest and smallest y values are the absolute extrema. So that means I have to find at f of 4, which gives me 8. I already know f of 0, which is 0. And then I also already have f of 8 over 3 and then f of 4 equals 8. So out of these, I have that my absolute min is located at x equals 0 and y equals 0. My absolute max is located at x equals 8 over 3, which is 8.7093. All right, your turn. For number 1, all I want you to do is find the critical numbers. And number 2, you're going to find the absolute extrema. Let's see how we did. <clears throat> so number one, you need to find the derivative. So using the quotient rule, simplify more simplifying. 
and I can even do some more. I can pull out a negative z. Now I'm going to go ahead and find the critical numbers, which is when the derivative equals zero, and in this case, where the fraction equals zero, which is when the numerator equals zero. So I let the numerator equal zero. And it does not exist when the denominator equals zero. So now when I solve the first one, I get z equals zero and z equals negative two. When I solve this one, I would get an imaginary number, so I do not even have to worry about it. So my critical numbers exist at zero and negative two. This tells me that there's going to be a local min or a local max at one or at both of these values. I don't know which one yet. On number two, you're going to find the absolute extrema. So find the derivative. You want to find where the derivative is zero and where it does not exist. Since it's a polynomial, it's continuous everywhere. Doesn't have any places it does not exist. So I only have to find it when it's zero. <clears throat> I factored out a three, divided everything by three. Factor. So that means I get x equals 1 and x equals 3. So now when I check the absolute extrema, since I'm looking for the highest and lowest point, I have to check the endpoints plus my critical numbers. So when I plug in each of these four x values into my original function, I get negative 1 comma negative 14, 1 comma 6, 3 comma 2, 4 comma 6. So this tells me that I have the lowest point at negative 1 comma negative 14, and I actually have two highest points. They're both at the same y value, which is okay, which is at 1 comma 6 and 4 comma 6. All right, let's see if you can find the absolute extrema on f of x equals x minus 2 cosine x from negative pi to pi. Okay, first find the derivative. Set the derivative equal to 0. And since sine of x is continuous everywhere, it doesn't have any places where the derivative does not exist, so I don't have to worry about that. I want to find at which x values does sine equal negative 1 over 2. Unit circle, sine is equal to negative 1 half at 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. But I want it to be in this interval, negative pi to pi. So in order to do that, I do need to change them into um, <clears throat> so they fit within this interval. So that means 7 pi over 6 is the same thing as negative pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6 is the same thing as negative pi over 6. And if you can't remember how to do this, this is like you're going the, instead of going counterclockwise around the unit circle, you are going clockwise around the unit circle, and since you're changing direction, you have to include a negative sign. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm going to check each endpoint. So at negative pi, I get negative 1.142. Negative 5 pi over 6, negative 0.885. At negative pi over 6, negative 2.255. And at pi, 5.142. So this tells me my absolute min is at negative pi over 6, comma, negative 2.255. My absolute max is at pi comma 5.14. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about um, the extreme values, and I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.